Hey guys, Jim here. I hope you're all safe and doing well. Today we're going to go over some echocardiography questions that will help you for your upcoming RDCS and or RCS for the CCI. Now feel free to pause the video after I ask the question, giving you enough time to answer it before I answer it. Finally, this is going to be a long test with a lot of good questions and a lot of videos. So I will try to upload these videos as quickly as I can. Let's get started. Question one. A successful bubble study was performed with bubbles seen in the left ventricle. However, the right atrium never showed any bubbles during the injection. What is the most likely reason for this? A. Infiltrated IV B. Intrapulmonary shunt C. Left to right ventricular shunt or D. Right to left atrial shunt The answer is D. Right to left atrial shunt This is because when the bubbles are coming into the right atrium, that right to left shunt will pull those bubbles into the left atrium before they can fill the right atrium. Number two, click on the descending aorta. Now obviously, sitting at home, you can't click on any image. So pause the video and you decide for yourself where you would click on this image. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you can see the entire image. If you clicked over here in this region, you are correct. So sometimes in the apical two-chamber view, you can see the descending aorta coming across the screen right there. Number three, what is the second most common primary sarcoma of the heart? A, rhabdomyosarcoma, B, hemangiosarcoma, C, renal cell carcinoma, or D, angiosarcoma? And the answer, of course, is A, rhabdomyosarcoma. Question four. Which type of malignant tumor grows in the inferior vena cava? A, leiomyosarcoma, B, hemangioma, C, rhabdomyosarcoma, or D, renal cell carcinoma? The answer is A, leiomyosarcoma. Question five, which cardiac tumor occurs downstream of valves? A, myxoma, B, mangioma, C, papillary fibroelastoma, or D, rhabdomyoma? The answer is C, papillary fibroelastoma. Question six, which of the following will cause the interventricular septum to move? A, restrictive cardiomyopathy, B, constricted pericarditis, D, right ventricular volume overload, or D, pericardial effusion. The answer is B, constrictive pericarditis. Question seven. 3D, 4D images are gated to the patients. A, respiration, B, EKG, C, EKG and respiration, or D, EKG, respiration, and output power? The answer is C, EKG and respiration. <clears throat> Typically, 3D, 4D images are acquired over what degree rotation at set intervals? A, 90 degrees, B, 180 degrees, C, 45 degrees, or D, 125 degrees? The answer is B, 180 degrees. Question nine. This longitudinal strain pattern demonstrates what? A, amyloidosis, B, apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, C, concentric left ventricular hypertrophy, or D, asymmetric septal hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The answer is D, asymmetric septal hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. <clears throat> Excuse me. When evaluating the pulmonary vein flow, we're on question 10. When evaluating the pulmonary vein flow into the left atrium, how far should the sample volume be placed proximal to the vein's junction within the left atrium? A, 10 millimeters. B, 10 centimeters. C, 5 millimeters or D, five centimeters? The answer is A, 10 millimeters. 
Question 11. When evaluating the pulmonary vein flow into the left atrium, how wide of a sample volume should be used inside the pulmonary vein? A. 1 to 2 millimeters. B. 3 to 5 millimeters. C. 69 millimeters. Or D. 10 to 12 millimeters. The answer is 3 to 5 millimeters. Question 12. What type of flow is typically found in the pulmonary veins? A. Triphasic. B. Biphasic. C. Monophasic. Or D. Turbulent. The answer is A. Triphasic. The S wave pulmonary vein flow occurs during A. Ventricular diastole. B. Ventricular systole. C. Isovolumic relaxation. Or D. Isovolumic contraction. And the answer is B. Ventricular systole. Question 14. The D wave pulmonary vein flow occurs during A. Ventricular diastole. B. Ventricular systole. C. Isovolumic relaxation. Or D. Isovolumic contraction. The answer is A. Ventricular diastole. Which of the following is not a recommendation when determining right ventricular systolic function? A. S prime of 8 centimeters per second. B. Tapsy of 15 millimeters. C. Free wall strain by speckle tracking of negative 17 percent. Or D. Fractional area change of 30 percent. The answer is C. Free wall strain by speckle tracking of negative 17 percent. Question 16. Females tend to have smaller atria. True or false? The answer is true. Question 17. Which of the following below is the correct equation to calculate the fractional area change? A. FAC equals N diastolic volume minus N systolic volume divided by N diastolic volume times 100. B. FAC equals N diastolic area minus N systolic area divided by N diastolic area. C. Fractional area change equals N diastolic area minus N systolic area divided by N diastolic area times 100. Or D. Fractional area change equals left ventricular internal diameter in diastole minus left ventricular internal diameter in systole divided by left ventricular internal diameter in diastole times 100. The answer is B. Fractional area change equals N diastolic area minus N systolic area divided by N diastolic area. Question 18. This longitudinal strain pattern demonstrates, let me zoom in here. A. Amyloidosis. B. Apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. C. Concentric left ventricular hypertrophy, or D, normal systolic function? The answer is D, normal systolic function. Which of the following below is the correct equation to calculate the fractional shortening? A, fractional shortening is equal to N diastolic volume minus N systolic volume divided by N diastolic volume times 100. B, Fractional shortening is equal to N diastolic area minus N systolic area divided by N diastolic area. C. Fractional shortening is equal to N diastolic area minus N systolic area divided by N diastolic area times 100. Or D. Fractional shortening is equal to left ventricular internal diameter in diastole minus left ventricular internal diameter in systole divided by left ventricular internal diameter in diastole times 100. And the answer is D. Isovolumic relaxation time is the time from A. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the aortic valve. B. Closure of the mitral valve to the opening of the tricuspid valve. C. Closure of the mitral valve to the opening of the aortic valve. Or D. Closure of the pulmonic valve to the opening of the tricuspid valve.
The answer is D. Closure of the closure of the pulmonic valve to the opening of the tricuspid valve. Again, isovolumic relaxation time is the time from A. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the pulmonic valve. B. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the mitral valve. C. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the pulmonic valve. Or D. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the mitral valve. The answer is D. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the mitral valve. Question 22. Isovolumic contraction is the time from A. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the pulmonic valve. B. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the mitral valve. C. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the pulmonic valve. Or D. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the mitral valve. The answer is C. Closure of the tricuspid valve to the opening of the pulmonic valve. Question 23. Isovolumic contraction time is the time from A. Closure of the aortic valve to the opening of the mitral valve. B. Closure of the mitral valve to the opening of the tricuspid valve. C. Closure of the mitral valve to the opening of the aortic valve. Or D. Closure of the pulmonic valve to the opening of the tricuspid valve. The answer is C. Closure of the mitral valve to the opening of the aortic valve. Question 25. What does this EKG represent? Let me zoom in here. Is this A, normal sinus rhythm, B, ventricular tachycardia, C, ventricular fibrillation, or D, atrial fibrillation? The answer is C, ventricular fibrillation. I will hurry and upload the next 25 questions very soon. So this is Jim with UltrasoundBoardOfView.com. Thanks for watching.